Right, so I, I think the first thing to know that salt is bad for us. It's not a nutrient. People would be amazed to hear that. But a salt is a chemical. And it's a chemical that is added to food for the greater amount. A and in, in the last century, uh, salt has become a toxic element in our food rather than a nutrient. Now, the majority of salt we eat coming from salt added to our food, either by ourselves with a salt cellar or by food manufacturers in the modern way in which food is processed and is distributed. And the natural source of salt in food accounts only for about 10% of our uh, daily intake and that is more than enough for our needs or it would be more than enough for our needs. So we tend to eat between five and 10 times more. Now, if you think about 100 years ago, salt entered into uh, the food chain several years, 100 years ago for different needs or preservation of food. Because your food would go rotten otherwise. So you would salt it and keep it. But in the last 100 years, with all the refrigeration, that is not needed. And yet salt is contained still in food. So that is one of the major problems why we eat so much salt without having any control of it. As you would imagine, you can't really avoid having salt because it's put to, you, to your food before you can even choose. Now, I think not many people understand why that is the case and why there's a big rumour about not only reducing salt and asking people to reduce it, but really discussing with governments, with organisations, with the food industry to negotiate a different way in making food which it would be less salty. And the reason why there is reticence and resistance to it is that the, in the, the food industry makes a lot of money. Despite uh, us developing disease with this. And there's for three main reasons. Amongst the others. The first one is salt. When salt is added to food, it makes food palatable. And it's easier to eat bad food if it's covered with the saltiness. That is a fact. And it, the reality is that when you eat salt, your taste buds that you have in your mouth tend to down-regulate, they're dampened by this high salt. So they can't feel the saltiness as much as it is, so you need to get more. Now that is driving the demand for salt, that the industry says, well, people want salt, that's how our consumers want salt. Now it's driven, because if you do studies, when you reduce your salt intake gradually, steadily, I will uh, be able to train your buds within a few weeks to taste more salt. So less salt will give you the reward of saltiness. You wouldn't have to eat that amount of salt, but you will eat less. So it is a vicious circle that makes the industry produce bad food, high in salt, and sell it at a high cost. And they will train you to demand more. The second level of what I call a cycle of profit for the industry is related to the characteristics of salt put in food. Salt or sodium uh, is a substance that when it's merged with other um, compounds making salt, phosphate salts or other salts, has the characteristics of uh, attracting water. That's what we say in science is an hygroscopic substance, so retains water. All right? You can see if you leave some, some rough salt uh, uh, outside at high temperature, after a while you find that it's melting because it's retaining water from humidity and everything else. Now, and the experience you have, when you have a pork chop in a frying pan, what happens in general? It shrinks in the first few minutes and it becomes about huh, well, 20% less. Why is that? Because water evaporates. In other words, the industry pumps sodium salts into meat products in order to increase the weight with water and selling at the cost of meat. And that is a profit. And they will all do it to a greater or lesser extent. And the, the extent is how much it shrinks in your frying pan. Okay? The third very subtle and more dangerous way is that salt causes, causes you to get thirsty. You get the thirst, you need to drink more. And this is our experience now, you get thirsty. And what people drink nowadays is not tap water. 
I would challenge any of you, uh, how many of your, your viewers, see how many of you regularly drink tap water, very few. The majority would drink the best mineral water, you would pay premium, or you probably drink soft drinks or alcohol. Now, soft drinks are high in uh, calories and they all fuel obesity. And one of the, the clear aspects of the salt contents of uh, industry prepared food is that the food, the drink manufacturers make a lot of profit from that. And they own the snacks, most of the snack industry. If you go to any vending machine in any station in Britain, for instance, I got a collection of pictures, you will find for one side you have all salty snacks, on the other side you will have all soft drinks. Lately you have one line of mineral water, but yet high premium water. And so you sell salty snacks in order to sell uh, soft drinks. And that's where the profit comes. There have been very st many, many studies in Britain, including um, very recently, showing that if we manage to reduce the salt intake to target as stipulated in Britain by three grams of salt per day, less the salt intake, across the population, every person in Britain would drink almost 500 mils less fluids. In other words, it would be probably almost a pint f less fluid per day, per person. And you think those are all cans of Coke, for instance, and you would consider a multi-billion dollar loss to the drink industry. And that's just considering soft drinks. So that is a very real reason why um, there is opposition for public health measures.